All right, well, we're here at Adelaide Motorsport Festival. We're with Mick Sigsworth. G'day, mate. Hey, Mark, how you going? Not bad, not bad. Now, tell us a bit about your time attack beast. Like, I've seen this floating around for a while. We did a bit of a video of it a while ago, but things have changed a bit. I've noticed mostly the aero is a fair bit different. Yeah, we're just looking at some different options there. So trying to bring it back to a standard factory 1800 wide car. Um, Does that put you in a different class or? Uh, different classes, but also more versatile, a lot easier to load. Uh, obviously less parts hanging out for contact with um, with other cars and stuff yeah. but um, just trying to maintain that standard look to make it a bit more versatile for maybe some door-to-door -door racing later on yeah well I mean, you can't really do door-to-door -door when you've got wings that are coming out to here can you? <laughs> yeah that's correct <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so um all right we'll give us a bit of a rundown this used to be a factory like car didn't it, it was like straight off the showroom floor one day yeah so 10 years ago in August this year so 2007 I bought this car as a factory white Evo 9. Yeah. Um, it, uh, four weeks later, we put a roll cage in it and we did um, three years of tarmac rallies and hill climbs. Yeah. Um, still street registered, um, air conditioning, everything, just roll cage and the safety requirements. Yeah. And then in 2013, we built more of a, um, a, a time attack car, so still steel car. Yeah. So we went from around about 1,570 kilos down to 1,300 kilo car. We ran that for 2013 and then at the end of 2013 we changed um, from a steel car to basically a carbon body car, which you see now. And we went down from, from 1,300 down to 1,000 kilos. So as you see it now, it's about 1,000 kilos, is it? Wet, correct. Wow. wow. So if you can imagine, that's 550 kilos we've removed out of a standard car uh -huh. over a four year period. And weight um, distribution I'm guessing is uh, pretty well spot on these days. Yeah, the weight balance is, um, it's 51.49, yep. so 51 at the front. Yep. Um, engine's actually been risen, it's moved back 50 mil. Um, we are limited to the actual drive shaft angles the issue. Okay, oh, so, because if you push it too far back, your drive shafts are gonna be pointing yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, basically you'll damage your CV joints. Okay. Uh, we still run actually, which is quite amazing, we were able to run factory CV joints. Oh, I see, you got them pointing back that way, yeah. Yeah, correct. Okay. And um, suspension, looks like some pretty trick set up there. What have you done there? Yeah, so we've gone with a double A arm suspension front and rear with a rocker system uh, on the front, as you can see there. Um, very short travel, of around about 60 millimetres. <laughs> Also, we run a sway bar um, that runs in underneath the dash through the firewall. Really? Um, and that is, so front and rear sway bars are also adjustable from the cabin itself. Um, so the driver can adjust just down there beside the seat. Brake bias is here oh, yeah. with the AP, yeah. front and rear. Yeah. And then we've got um, rear sway bar and front sway bar adjustment. Huh, I've um, never seen in car adjustable sway bars before. That's incredible. Yeah, so I suppose a big thing around, as we we're talking before, around the balance of the car, the big one is that my seating position. So we've you basically- look like you're in the, almost in the middle of the car there, like- So basically the, your left hand leg is in the center line of the car itself. Yeah. So the actual tail shaft angle is quite aggressive in this car, um, but it actually works and it's actually reliable. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually run a motorsport, uh, an M3 GDR center bearing, um, CV joint. And obviously you can see the work that's been done in here to try and um, also make it presentable but also um, easy to access things and it's actually very comfortable to sit in, it's actually very easy to drive so. And so gearbox wise what have you got? So I run a MacTrack um, sequential gearbox. Yeah, um, paddle shifted. Yeah. So we run a an actual, we actually, actually run a Geartronics um, paddle shift system, but it's actually controlled by an M150 Motec, um, and that has been the key um, to looking after the dog's um, gears and the gearbox itself. We also run a Mac track um, front transfer and a rear diff. Um, so factory, these are around about four inch in diameter. We run a seven and a half inch crown wheel and pinion. 
mechanical clutch torque split. So we can change the torque. So you can actually adjust car. the the front and rear. So like front and rear, they are mechanical. So you've got to pull them out to make an adjustment. But um, we run a uh, a 56-44 split. So we actually have 56% drive out of the front and 44 out of the rear. So it actually pulls out of the corner like a front wheel drive car, but okay. obviously still gives you the right drive out of the yeah. rears. Yeah. So really nice to drive. Yeah, definitely. And what's under that box on the passenger side there? So what we run there is we've got a um, an approved fuel cell. We run our air compressor, our reservoir. We run a, um, a lift pump in there. We run solenoids and our dry sump tank. Um, okay. uh, obviously ECU and everything else is under there as well. So um, yeah, just to balance the, to get the car evenly balanced across the car, not only in length, in the length of the car, but also the width. Now brakes wise, what do you got going on there? So we run a, um, a uh, an AP brake system. We only run a four, four piston front and rear. So just to keep the weight down, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so one was around weight. Um, and the second one was, is it, is, it does only weigh a thousand kilos, yeah, so you don't really monstrous. need big brakes. Yeah. You know, we're only running 320 mil rotors on the front and 290 on the rear, so quite small. Yeah. So this engine is um, uh, built by um, Will from JHH Racing. So it's yeah. a um, factory cast block. It's a, it runs a Nitto 2.2 stroker kit. Yeah. Um, we've got a custom exhaust manifold system there. We obviously run our turbo on quite an angle. We're running a Garrett these days and um, the linear power delivery has been excellent on that. Yeah, it looks like a fairly small exhaust housing on there too. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like, you say it shouldn't be too laggy then? Or? No, it's, it's it's around about four and a half thousand RPM, but it'll go all the way to, to eight and a half. So maximum power we've, we've run in this car is um, 35 pound on the dyno. Yep. We've never run over 29 on the track. Yep. Um, on 35, you're looking at around 550 kilowatt at all four wheels. And you've got a car that weighs um, <laughs> a thousand kilos, so yeah. um, it is very good. We run a custom inlet manifold, um, Wiggins clamps, we run a PWR cooling package. Um, and the intake system, it's something that, you know, a lot of people don't get to see. Um, so a lot of people look at our intake system and they're, they're, they're always asked questions about, you know, why it is designed like that. Um, we actually get a crate of Venturi in this system and it actually speeds the airflow up into the actual turbo. Um, the actual filter itself is very difficult to find because you can't actually see it I in the engine bay. I can't see it at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the fuel filter, sorry, the, the air filter is actually comes in from the intake. Uh -huh. It is actually underneath. There we go. You can see it. So that's a Porsche six cylinder. K N air filter. So what happens is our core for the radiator intercooler is is quite dense. So at high speed, it, it's it, very limited flow goes through it. Yeah. It's trying to cool the water. Okay. So we actually get a lot of bleed off of air. So it actually starts to force it through in through there. Yeah. And what is this? So that's a fuel filter. Fuel filter. And cooler in one. Wow. So we actually cool the fuel and the reason why we looked at cooling the fuel on the intake side is because we run a mechanical okay. fuel yeah, pump. I noticed that we, we had issues once the heck I was heat soaked, I didn't want to start. So yes. is that to eliminate those sort of issues? To try and remove that, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, the bodywork was done off the original steel body. Yep. Um, so all your normal lines, your sill lines, your door joints, everything was filled, bogged, reshaped to the shape that we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Time, now, this so. carbon is just incredible. Like, yeah. I don't think I've seen a car so with as much attention to detail on the. The key to the key to obviously um, the carbon work was in the moulds. So we had um, two guys, a guy called um, Rob Sabo and, and Wayne. They did all the moulds for this car. Amazing work. And then Brad Cawthorn from Cawthorn Composites made all the carbon products. And you know he's a master at this. And as you can see, and this. But the funny thing about this, this is actually a clear out of the mould. Really? There's been no clear applied to this. So we apply the clear in the mould first, then we lay the products in and it comes out, then we rub it back with some 2000 and then we buff it. I don't think I've seen a car this much carbon in it, it's just crazy. So is there anything at the back end of this car or is it all pretty well? No, the only, um, obviously it's a ground effects car, so full aero. 
It's got a flat floor. We run a um, quite a quite a standard type um, diffuser. We do run a little rear wing in the back here, and it just gives a little bit more tuning of the rear end of the car if it gets a bit light. Okay. All right, and uh, how's the car been performing for you for this weekend? Yeah, it's been good. We had a couple of little small things yesterday, but limited to doing a decent time. But this morning we did a 57, so we're in full spot. Uh, things looking good for this afternoon. We're back on at four o'clock, so uh, definitely got some improvement to make. But um, yeah, the car's going good, so looking forward to this afternoon. Great to hear. Well, we'll grab some in-car footage from you. Thanks very much for your time and good luck the rest yeah. of the day. Excellent. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Mark.